to your cozy corner of the literary world where every page brings a new adventure and every word holds a world of wonder. My name is Nadia Rahma Siregar, or Nadia for short. Today I have two books to be reviewed, one fiction and one nonfiction. So, the first book that I'll be reviewing is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, the fictional one. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky immerses readers in the psychological abyss of its protagonist, Rodion Raskolnikov, a destitute former student in St. Petersburg. Convinced of his intellectual superiority, Raskolnikov rationalizes the murder of a pawnbroker as a demonstration of his extraordinary status, setting off a journey of guilt, paranoia, and moral reckoning. Pursued by the relentless investigator Porfiry Petrovich, Raskolnikov's internal conflict intensifies as he forms intricate relationships, notably with Sonia, a virtuous young woman trapped in prostitution. Crime and Punishment is written by Fyodor Dostoevsky, a famous Russian author who has written other several memorable books. The Crime and Punishment lies underneath the genre of psychological and crime, and also maybe thriller as well. The main plot of Crime and Punishment follows the protagonist, Rodion Raskolnikov, a poverty-stricken former student in St. Petersburg, who believes in his own superiority and commits a murder to prove his theory that certain individuals are above conventional morality. The novel delves into his psychological and moral turmoil as he grapples with the consequences of his actions and the pursuit of justice by the investigator Porfiry Petrovich. Alongside this central narrative, the story explores Raskolnikov's complex relationships and themes of guilt, redemption, and the human condition. The, the, there are uh, several main characters from the story. Primarily, Rodion Raskolnikov, Sonia Marmeladov, and the investigator, Prof. Porfiry Petrovich. Raskolnikov, the protagonist, is a former student who believes in his own intellectual superiority and commits a murder to test this theory of extraordinary individuals being above conventional morality. He grapples with guilt, paranoia, and inner turmoil throughout the novel. Sonia Marmeladova, a devout young woman forced into prostitution to support her family. Sonia becomes a central figure in Raskolnikov's life offering him moral support and guidance. And finally, Porfiry Petrovich, the clever and persistent investigator who pursues Raskolnikov after the murder. Porfiry engages in psychological cat and mouse games with Raskolnikov, trying to extract a confession out of him. In Crime and Punishment, Fyodor Dostoevsky explores themes of morality, guilt, redemption, and the complexities of the human psyche. The novel also delves into social issues like poverty and inequality, while raising questions about justice, free will, and the transformative power of suffering. I really like this book. I enjoyed reading through all of it, and I highly recommend it for others as well. Crime and Punishment is appreciated for its psychological depth, complex characters, and exploration of philosophical themes like morality and justice. Personally, I enjoy it for its social commentary. The novel offers a steering critique of 19th century Russian society, highlighting issues such as poverty, inequality, and dehumanizing effects of urban life. While many readers appreciate the depth and complexity of the characters, others may find them difficult to relate to or understand. Raskolnikov's morality and moral ambiguity and erratic behavior in particular can be challenging for some readers to empathize with or sympathize. As with Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, it was written from the perspective of the hor horrible protagonist in which it seemed like it was written in a way to justify his actions. Raskolnikov may be the protagonist, but he's horrible. Regardless of its flaws, I enjoyed reading Crime and Punishment and it reached beyond my expectations. It is wildly regarded as one of the greatest novels ever written. I would recommend Crime and Punishment to others. 
especially to readers who enjoy thought-provoking literature and psychological exploration. Despite its philosophical depths, Crime and Punishment is also a grip gripping and suspenseful story. Crime and Punishment stands as a towering masterpiece of world literature, a testament to Fyodor Dostoevsky's unparalleled insight into the human condition. Dostoevsky's penetrating examination of morality, guilt, redemption, and the nature of justice transcends its 19th century Russian setting. Overall, I rate this book a 9 out of 10. If I could alter the ending, then I have a few suggestions. The original ending of the book was that Raskolnikov confesses his crime and is sentenced to exile in Siberia. Through suffering and redemption, he ultimately finds peace and resolves to live a life of humility and service. It is what I expected, but a twist once more would have been perfect. Instead of confessing his crime, Raskolnikov manages to evade capture and flees the city, haunted by his guilt but determined to start anew. As he travels, he encounters various individuals whose lives are impacted by his actions, leading him to reflect deeply on the consequences of his choices. However, unable to escape the torment of his conscience, Raskolnikov eventually returns to St. Petersburg, where he seeks out Sonia for guidance and solace. Finally, we are on to the non-fiction uh, non book, The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. The Devil in the White City is a literary non-fiction novel set in Chicago during the late 1800s. Focusing on the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, the novel, divided into four parts, explores how Chicago bid to host the fair led to the creation of the world's first known serial killer, highlighting the city's struggles during this time. The Devil in the White City is a historical nonfiction book presented in a novelistic style that spans the years surrounding the building of the 1893 Chicago World Fair and is classified as a nonfiction novel and a true crime. The main plot of the book is that it tells two interlaced stories of the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. One story is about the chief architect of the fair's wide city, while the other is about a murderer that ran rampant at the time, often considered America's first serial killer. The book uses extensive research to recreate the lives of two real men and reinvent Chicago during the World's Columbian Exposition. There are several characters that were shown in the book, primarily Daniel H. Burnham and H. H. Holmes. Daniel H. Burnham the, is the lead architect and the director of works for the World's Columbian Exposition, assembled a team of elite architects and worked tirelessly under pressure to cre create the White City, becoming one of America's most famous architects. H.H. Uh, H. Holmes is a sociopath. He built the World's Fair Hotel, manipulating people through seduction and money. He mimics human emotion, fooling people and killing young women without remorse, despite lacking empathy. The Devil in the White City is a book that tells two main stories, the life of notorious serial killer H.H. H. Holmes and the recreation of the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. It explores themes of evil, delusions, and the conflict between good and evil, daylight and darkness, and the white city and the black. The book explores the complexities of evil and delusions, highlighting the complexities of human nature. Readers are captivated by the book's captivating narrative, which explores the murderer's point of view and its engaging plot. This unique concept gives the story additional richness and the complexity, raising its level of interest and engaging. However, there are some things that are disliked about the book. The amount of information in the book was overwhelming, and its too formal style added to the confusion. 
the overwhelming amount of information made it difficult to understand and prevented me from having a more enjoyable reading experience. Did the book meet to my expectations? Yes. As soon as I set eyes on the book, I got a kick out of knowing that it will go into the rich history and fascinating details of America in the past, which really grabs my interest and sense of research. I would recommend this book to others. The thrilling storyline of the book properly blends exciting parts that will appeal to readers who enjoy fascinating biographies or murder mysteries. Reading through its pages is sure to be an engaging experience, providing an exciting mixture of knowledge and mystery that will make viewers and readers want to learn more about the fascinating world it offers. This is my final assessment and rating of the book. I would rate the book an 8 out of 10 due to its thrilling and exciting storyline. However, I didn't give it a 9 out of 10 because of the overly formal language and excessive amount of information included, which at times left me feeling slightly overwhelmed and confused while reading. If I could make my own ending of the book, maybe the ending could be altered to suggest that the murderer, who was seemingly invincible, eventually succumbs to an unseen force that compels him to end his own life. This unexpected turn of events could imply a profound internal struggle within the antagonist, leading to a chilling yet strangely poetic revelation. That is all for today's episode and cover to cover. See you next time!